In this lesson, I'm going to explain how you use the Premiere Pro Mixer to record audio. So to follow along, go to Working Files and Projects and go on down to 2003 Recording Audio. I'm going to use recording a narration as an example for how to record audio. And we're going to narrate this little bike ride here. And this is not an unusual workflow. Lots of times people lay down their video clips and then narrate them. But I think the better way to do things is to write your script and then edit your clips to the script. But this way is also just fine. So we're going to record audio and watch the video as we record the audio. Before we start recording audio, we need to set up a couple of things. And the first thing is, where are we going to store the audio files we make as we do our recordings? You'd think you would select that location inside Preferences, but it's a project-based thing. So you need to go to Project and go to Project Settings, Scratch Discs. Where are you storing things? And usually Captured Audio, which is the same as Recorded Audio, is stored in the same location as the project. But we're going to change that. We're going to go to the desktop and we're going to select our Premiere Pro Exercise Files folder where we store stuff temporarily and select that folder. Okay, click OK. Next order of business is to select which piece of hardware we're going to connect to Premiere Pro. You do that in Preferences. So go Edit or Premiere Pro Preferences and then go to Audio Hardware. Now, all along, I've been working with Premiere Pro WDM Sound here on the Windows side of things, but connecting to my devices works better if I switch over to my Creative ASIO. That's just for my computer. So I'm switching over to that, which will ensure that the connection will be smooth. And now we're ready to go. So now how do you do this? Well, you want to record to a track. And you would select the track over here and then record to that. Well, these tracks here are the standard tracks, and standard tracks can handle both monaural and stereo files. And if you record to a standard track, it'll record in stereo. But we're going to record a narration here, and there's no reason to record a narration to a stereo track. So I'm going to right-click on a header here and add a track. Click on that. I want to add an audio track. I'm going to add an audio track that's not standard, but it's mono like that. And I want it to be, let's say, below audio 1. So I'm going to go here and say, after audio 1. So it'll show up right there. And I'm going to click OK. There we go. And now it puts it right there. And you see the little monaural symbol there saying this is a monaural track. All right, so now we're ready to go there. And it also adds a track over here inside the mixer, Audio 2. So we're going to record to Audio 2. So we need to do a couple of things here. When you record to a track here, you need to enable it for recording. So you click on this little R button. That's to enable the track for recording. And now we're ready to record to that track. But I want to be able to see my levels. And so far, I don't see them. The way you see your levels is to make a little change here in the panel menu. So go up to the panel menu. Go down here and click on this meter inputs only. And now there's my level. And you need to check your level. It needs to be up there high enough that you're not going to the red like that. Oh, just on the edge or not too quiet down there. You want some kind of a level right about there. That's a good level to record to. So do get that set up. And you may need to do this outside of Premiere. You need to do this in your audio settings on your own computer. So now that guy is ready to go. And the way you make your recording is that you click this little red button down here to get the recording set up. So you enable a track, any number of tracks. You can record to any number of tracks at once. And then you say, okay, now we're ready to record, but that's not going to start it yet. It's just going to blink there saying, okay, we're ready to go. And then you click this little play button. Now, if I were to do that now, I would get some horrible feedback. That's because the audio is going to go into the track and into the master track. And the master track basically is going to be heard by the system. And then it's going to record the master track as well. And so it'll be repeating this little loop that goes faster and faster. I'm going to start recording now to show you that that'll happen. I'll keep it brief, though, because it can get really annoying. Here we go. Ready? And now I'm recording. And there we go. It's getting worse and worse. So we'll stop. OK, so we don't want that to happen. The way you stop that is by muting the track. So the audio won't come out of the track to the master track. The other thing is I don't want to record audio that's coming from other tracks. This track right now is playing through. And to avoid that, I can mute it. Or I can simply solo this track. That means that everything else will be turned off if you've got audio in the other tracks. Seems kind of odd to mute it and solo it at the same time. But this is a good way to get things set up. You're soloing the track to avoid hearing other tracks. You're muting it so you don't get feedback, and then the record button is ready to go. Now notice what happened when we recorded that first little awful feedback clip. It showed up down here. Audio 2, it says. This is what happens when you record something. The clip that you make shows up down here, and then a link to it shows up here in the project panel. And then a file that you've just created will show up inside that folder where you told it to go. Let me show you that. Here's the Premiere Pro Exercise Files folder, and there is that file we just made with that horrible feedback. And that's where it's stored, and it'll be there permanently if you close down Premiere Pro and don't even save your project. If you remove the links, these files will still be there. So let's go back to Premiere Pro then. All right, so now we're ready to record. So I'm going to take the current time indicator back to the beginning, 
And you may be thinking, we've got this clip down here, and what's going to happen to that guy when we record on that track? Well, it's not going to go away permanently. We're just going to cover it up as if we dragged another clip there and replaced it. But it'll still be here inside the project panel, so all will not be lost if we record there. All right, now we're ready to go. I've got this guy enabled for recording. I've got this little red button now turned on. It's blinking and saying we're ready to go. So now I'm going to click on play, and we're going to narrate this little bike ride. So here it is, a beautiful day here in Sonoma County. Everybody's out for a bike ride. And now they're heading on down the path. As they go along here, they're going to check out the sights. Off to the left will be a lovely vineyard. And then over to the right will be this wonderful creek with all its nature and birds and turtles and fish. And then looking out ahead there, we've got this uh, little tributary coming in from the left as we cross over this bridge. Done. And now we've got this clip down there. It's numbered 2 underscore 1. The clips are named based upon the track that you recorded them to. So there's track 2, audio 2, and then they're numbered starting with just nothing, just 2, and then it'll be underscore 1, 2, etc. as you go forward. Let's listen to this clip. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, pressing the home key here. And I'm going to now unmute this thing, unsolo this thing, unrecord this thing. I'm also going to switch over to the regular meter display like that. Okay, let's give this a listen. Here bike we go. Ride. So here it is, a beautiful day here in Sonoma County. Everybody's out for a bike ride. And now they're heading on down the path. Okay, you don't need to hear the entire narration. Notice that I paused there. I know that there's going to be natural sound there as they go by the camera, so I just paused there to give a little space for that natural sound. Even if I didn't pause there, I could have then cut the clip here and moved it over to one side to allow that natural sound to play there. So that's how you record a narration. Recording audio from any other source works basically the same way. Any kind of sound that you can get into your system, whatever input you've got, and you can then see it displayed here when you watch the input levels, then you can record that audio here inside Premiere Pro using the mixer.